Hi, um, I am the Orlando Sentinel's opinion editor. My name is Chris Fluker, and I'm welcoming you today to our um, editorial board interview of candidates in House, I mean, sorry, State Senate District 17, um, which includes much of East Orange County, reaching from Orlando to encompass UCF, Lake Nona, and Bithlo. And this just to just to know, um, Senator Linda Stewart is a member of the Senate. However, prior to this year's redistricting, she represented District 13. Now she is joined today by Stephen Dixon, who is a Republican who has filed to run in this race. And um, and we welcome both of them. We're going to be spending about 30 minutes running. Um, through some questions that we have on some of the bigger issues that face um, Florida right now, and um, and giving giving both of our candidates a chance to weigh in on what they think is most important. And I'm going to start with a question that um, touches on the only duty that Florida legislators have, which is to write a budget. And starting next year, the downpouring of federal money that has kept Florida afloat for the last couple of years is going to start drying up. What challenges do you see and how does Florida set its priorities? And I'd like to start with Mr. Dixon, please. Hi, my name is Steve Dixon, and um, I'm running for Florida Senate 17 and uh, appreciate you inviting me to be part of this interview. Um, it's really my first interview, so I'm kind of excited about it, a little nervous too. <laughs> um, anyway, yeah, we, we've been getting a lot of federal funds that have come into Florida, as you know. Um, we've had many challenges that some of that money's had to go towards, but we have shown that we have quite a bit of excess, which I think could be some could be saved, you know, for future needs. Um, and some certainly put, put to use in the areas that are needed right now for people that are still recovering, maybe help with some job situations, you know, and, and, and things like that. But I, I think the most important thing is to put some in reserves for the future that will help benefit, you know, in case we have some type of other disaster that comes our way. What if we had severe hurricanes or something like that? We've had a very light hurricane season this year, but things could be used for things like that. Thank you very much, Senator Stewart. Would you like to tackle that question? That is a great question. Um, and we did have a hundred billion dollars in our budget, and that is thanks to a lot of the federal funding that we did get and you're correct on not having that much money available to us for next year so we have built up quite a, a contingency fund uh, and we're going to have to look at uh, all of our programs and how we might be more effective in reducing uh, some of the um, cost and certainly the rules uh, that apply. And but we do have some major challenges that we are going to have to fund. And while you know, while I'm in terribly involved with the environment, we have insurance that is just. Uh, going to uh, need to have a, a, a total overhaul. So there's many programs that we're going to have to look at very closely and overhaul them in order to get our budget in order for next year. Okay, actually, I have one quick follow-up, and that is um, unique to Orange County, which maybe probably is the biggest donor county, um, sending more money to Tallahassee than almost any other county and getting back a very small fraction of that on a per capita basis. What can, given, given that um, Central Florida's delegation is um, largely, um, and especially from Orange County, um, Democrat and therefore not not in control of the legislature right now, um, how can we 
possibly bring back some of that money that that Orange County is sending to Tallahassee. And um, Senator Stewart, we can start with you. Oh, I have been extremely successful um, in bringing money to Central Florida. Um, and I think that this will continue because I do try to cross the line and work with everybody. Um, I have uh, in local projects alone this year, I have acquired and secured $35 million in our budget uh, for local projects. Uh, one of them is building the new uh, UC, the new UCF nursing school down in Lake Nona. So uh, there is a, a lot of opportunities here for Central Florida that I have been able to bring to Central Florida. But you're correct in that it seems like more of our money goes to Tallahassee and less comes back into the coffers of our cities and counties. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Dixon, what are your thoughts on that? Actually, I, I quite agree that we need to work across the aisle on this, right? The um, We need to come to consensus to figure out what's important for the people of the different areas, work with the different committees and get them to agree that, hey, we need this these funds for such and such a project and get consensus between the groups to bring the money back to here. Thank you for that. I wanted to uh, ask you both a little bit with, uh, with the change in district lines as, as things have been redistricted and, and orders have changed and everything else, I wondered, and, and Senator Stewart, this, I guess, especially speaks to you as, as an incumbent, but, but to Mr. Dixon also, what are the, the one or two biggest issue priorities that you see as specific to, to the district that you would be serving? Um, Mr. Dixon, let me start with you on that one. Okay. Since I'm already off mute, that's good. Okay, so I think everybody, regardless of the redistricting or where you're at, the inflation that has just been running away like crazy over the last um, year or so is really, really affecting everybody. You know, you go into the grocery store and things are up 30%. Some things are up more. And that affects everybody, regardless of your economic situation. Um, so I, I think finding ways to um, fight the inflation, get gas prices down, is something that we need to work on. The other thing that's been out of control is uh, the rents and mortgage and such like that. House prices have gone up, so rents go up. And we've got to find a way to get control of that so that people can live more affordably. Let me follow up with you on that really quickly. Do, do you have uh, specific ideas or, or specific plans from a legislative level that might be able to uh, to address those issues? Okay. So the food situation, I'd really like to work with uh, our agriculture uh, team and um, see where we can increase our agriculture within Florida. I think we've all been here for a while and you can go down the road and see where something used to be a orange grove and now it's a subdivision. You know, we need to start bringing some more agriculture back because I think food security within our in our state and within our country is going to be a concern here in the near future. Thank you. And uh, and Senator Stewart, same same questions and same general idea for you. Well, Central Florida is a very unique area. Um, we have um, rural and we also have urban, and we seem like we're getting more urban than rural. And therefore, some of my priorities are affordable housing, uh, trying to make sure that the um, new developments coming in, they go up, they don't go spread out, so we don't interfere with uh, the environment. And that part of these uh, pro part of these construction projects include a percentage of affordable housing in them so that people have a place that they could go to to um, occupy a resident because we that's what our big problem is is we need uh, to have housing and we need to get people off the streets and in order to do that we've got to provide for uh, those opportunities and I think that's one of the major things that we should be looking at 
in coming up in the next future and making sure that we um, have uh, those opportunities available because uh, we did used to have a lot of orange groves. You're right about that, but uh, uh, there's not much land left to take. So we're going to have to uh, use our urban and um, our um, rural areas to see what we can do to um, make sure that these housing opportunities exist. I, I would like to follow up on housing. Um, what is Florida's housing situation is getting dire. Here in Orange County, it's been declared to be an, a, a crisis, but not yet an emergency, <laughs> um, which strikes some people as a distinction without a difference. Where should the legislature be putting the bulk of its efforts um, in specific actions to boost the amount of affordable housing in Central Florida and throughout the state? And um, let's start with the Senator Stewart. Well, what we really, really, really need to do is work with our local uh, governments because they are putting forth money uh, that has come from the taxpayers, and but they don't have enough. And therefore, when you work across the aisle and you work with uh, the various agencies, uh, we need to start collaborating and making sure that we work together so our money goes further. And that's what I think um, is a big challenge. We've got, there will be federal money available. There will be state money that we could make available, but we need to get um, a coalition together with all our local in Central Florida, which uh, we have quite a few uh, that have already tried to track, you know, tackle this situation. That we need to make sure that they're getting the help they need through the state and federal. Thank you, uh, Mr. Dixon. All right, so I agree with that. The um, we need to work to get more work in the zoning and stuff like that to help get the right type of housing for the people that we have here in Central Florida. You know, um, years ago, the we had a single family housing boom here, you know, now, but now those houses have, the prices on those have gone through the roof. So if you look out now, there's apartment complexes that seem to be going up all over the place. You just drive down Narcusi, not too far from where I live, and there's three, four apartment complexes going up. There's ones going up off of um, uh, Dean Road, Curry Ford area too. You know, so the apartments are more affordable, but we still need more of that for the uh, people that don't make as much and need that type of lower end housing. So yeah, we have to work together to uh, make that happen. Thank you very much. Um, David, you have another question? Sure, I'll jump in. I wanted to ask you both whether you think, I, I wanted to ask you both a little bit about tourism and whether you thought that Visit Florida right now was an, was an effective method for, for, for tourism marketing and whether it's, whether it's doing what it needs to, whether it's doing too much that should be put in other areas or, or, or how you feel about that. Uh, Mr. Dixon, let's start with you on that. So my understanding of the visit uh, Central Florida tourism is that we have a bunch of money that needs to be spent in different areas, right? Mostly helping the tourist areas. Um, some of asked, can that be used for roads and stuff to improve the roads and surrounding area? Um, and it seems like that the uh, people that are involved in that, in the tourism industry, would be good to get out and talk to them and their groups and see what their actual needs are. I've not had a chance to do that, you know. Um, but I think we survey the, the people that are actually working in the tourism industry and see what their basic needs are. What are the things that will make the most impact for them? You know, on the bright side, you know, here in Central Florida, people are coming here in droves. You know, they don't want to go to some of the places that are have been shut down, you know. We're open, we're doing well. We have a beautiful city, a beautiful um, theme parks and everything that people want to come to. So, you know, I think uh, the advertising in other places, we just need to let them know, hey, we're open and we want you to come here and visit us in Florida. Thank you for that. Uh, Senator Stewart, same question. 
I support Visit Florida. Um, I think particularly during the COVID uh, era, which we've had two years of it, I think that they have helped to um, bring tourism here in Central Florida when it was almost nearly impossible to do. Uh, and so I think that they they served a great purpose uh, in uh, making sure that our tourism stayed up. But we live in such a great uh, county and with it's such a great community where tourism is our number one, you know, uh, drawing card and certainly puts a lot of money in our coffers to be able to do a lot of things. Now, whether or not we want to look, at, I, I have suggested we look at the bed tax, that maybe that bed tax could be used in some other areas. They're making uh, a lot of money out of the bed tax now that we've got back on our feet a little bit. And um, I've, I've always said, let's let's not forget that we might be able to use things uh, out of the bed tax that would have, that would help tourism. Um, I know people have said, well, let's use the bed tax for schools. Well, tourists, tourists don't use schools. So I would think that the things that we need to look at is transportation and we need a lot of money for that. And there's also, um, you know, signalization. There's a lot of things that we may be able to do that would help our community. Thank you. And if it, Mr. Dixon, if I could uh, double back on you for a second, because tourist sure. development tax was sort of the uh, next question on our list. I, I just wanted to ask you real quick if, if you had an, uh, a, uh, an idea of whether the tourist development tax is being used properly now, and if not, what else would you use it for? Just really quickly. Okay. So the tourist development tax, um, I'm not real familiar with that. I'd like to be more familiar, right? Um, but if Congress, you know, our legislature came up with a plan of how a tax is supposed to be spent, then we should go by the guidelines that were set forth, right? So I'm sure that the senators and um, representatives up in Tallahassee came up with a plan for that, and we should honor that plan and do what they said. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, and uh, I wanted to, I wanted to, um, kind of shift to an issue that has been very much in the forefront of people's minds um, and that is the question of abortion access um, how far should the legislature go um, in restricting or even outright banning abortion procedures and if you could just, in a very concise way, give us an idea of where you stand, um, and then we can move on. I know it's a hot button issue for a lot of people. And um, let's start with Mr. Dixon. So this is a, probably an issue where we will vary quite widely. I am pro-life, 100% pro-life. I want to save life from the womb all the way to the tomb, right? Um, Abortion is a horrible thing that people have to deal with. It's not an easy decision, I don't think, for anybody. But unfortunately, too much of abortion is used basically as um, almost like contraceptive, right? Well over 95% you know, is just an unwanted pregnancy, okay? When you get down to the um, the idea of the things that are most controversial, rape, incest, and um, maybe the health of the mother, right? It's a very, very, very small percentage, somewhere less than a percent, you know? So if you use the statistics for Orlando, um, for 2021, I think there were 5,597 abortions that were listed or reported. That would mean about six of those fall into that category that is really tough to decide on. And I don't think we take the other 5,593, or not 91, I'm sorry, and do something with them, kill those babies when, you know, to prevent the others. So, like I said, I'm 100% pro-life. 
Well, thank you very much for, for showing that with us. Senator Stewart, would you like to give us your views? Well, one thing is correct. We will definitely disagree on this one um, because I uh, am pro-choice. Um, I voted against House Bill 5 that um, placed a 15-week, um, we had 24 and they changed it to 15 weeks. Uh, in, in the bill, it did not allow for any consideration of incest and rape. I think that is appalling. Uh, and I just flat out do not think that people should be coming into a woman's life in making decisions on behalf of the woman. And that is really up to the physician and the family. And I, I think that uh, this goes against everything that we have protected for 50 years. And I know that depending on what happens uh, this year coming up, that our governor will be for a complete ban on abortion and for any reason. And I will be totally opposed to that. So we've got to work really hard to make sure our women know how, where we stand. And the only way to prove that is to vote. So women get out there and vote. Okay. Um, and there is one more um, somewhat hot button issue that that is um, to, to drove a lot of the coverage and discussion during the uh, during the recent uh, legislative session, um, and that is the introduction of policies in the state legislature regarding um, critical race theory and the discussion of human sexuality in terms of, of sexual orientation and um, gender issues. Um, what is your take on that? Was that an appropriate thing to devote legislative time to, or um, are there other priorities you would have rather seen addressed? Um, and um, Senator Stewart, if you can start with you, and then Mr. Dixon. I voted no on House Bill 1557, which was the Don't Say Gay Act. I voted no on Individual uh, Freedom House Bill 7, known as Stop Woke Act. I am opposed to banning books. I think it dumbs down um, America and it dumbs down our children. So, and it also interferes with the ability of our teachers to actually teach. So I am, um, I don't know why we picked up these controversial things when we have so many other things that we should have addressed like insurance or affordable housing and homelessness and mental health. We have so many things out there, but no, we go to these things that um, interfere with people's decisions and it interferes with their lifestyle and it's just wrong. Uh, Mr. Dixon. This, um, this whole thing, the critical race theory starting on that, you know, I've been around in the country for a while. Yeah. I'm not a spring chicken. And I've seen where things have changed over the years. Okay. I don't see our country as a racist country. I don't see our government as a racist government. I think we do lots of good things to prevent any type of racism. I do think there are people out there that like to stir up race problems, you know, but I think in general, the majority of Americans are basically colorblind. Okay. Um, as far as teaching some of these things in school, gender identity and all these things in school, you know, we need to let kids be kids, you know, as kids get older, they're going to start learning about this stuff, but I think the right place for them to learn it first is from their parents. You know, I don't think some of that needs to be in our schools. You know, little boy, little girl, you know, they don't always understand everything. And if we try and explain complex things like that to them, you know, they're not going to understand that. I think we need to wait till kids are older and let the parents handle it first. Thank you very much. I will sneak in one more question about the schools that, that I think um, I think is an issue that 
is going to have a real impact in coming in, in the current school year and particularly next year. Um, what more should the state be doing to address what many say is a looming crisis in the form of a significant shortage of qualified teachers? And um, Mr. Dixon, would you like to start on that one? So I, I think in many areas we need to have more um, people in different jobs, right? I think overall we have a little bit of a shortage of um, all types of trades, jobs, people, professions, right? Teachers are just one of them. So I think we need to find ways to bring good paying jobs here to Florida, which will attract good teachers also that'll want to come here and teach our kids, you know. Um, I know people in other states that um, have looked at coming to Florida, you know, and they were teachers. Um, our teacher pay may not be as good as teachers pay in other places. Maybe looking at teachers pay is one of the things we need to look at and it might attract more people to them. One of the other things is, you know, I would find it hard to be a teacher nowadays. The children in many schools don't have the respect for the teachers and they don't have the backing of the parents, mm -hmm. you know? And I think that's important. And it, when a teacher feels like they're dragged through the mud each day because they're dealing with difficult children, you know, it's hard to tell other people, yeah, being a teacher is great, you know? So I'd like to see more teachers. Um, I taught at a charter school for a little while and um, it was a real challenge, you know? Um, I think we have to do some things with our charter schools here in Florida, too. Okay, um, I would like to know what, what you think should be done with charter schools. And we'll, then we'll uh, take both questions over this and the But what, what, what would you just briefly want to do with charter schools? Well, I don't know. That was, you know, 20 years ago or more when I mm -hmm. did that. Um, but back then, I think the idea of that charter school that I actually worked at was good. You know, they were trying to bring new technology to the kids. Unfortunately, the incentive was money, I think, for the administrators of the school in this case. Um, so I, I saw things that I, I didn't like. I think uh, some of the charter schools need some better oversight. And I think they need to all meet some minimum standards, you know minimum standards of the teachers, you know, minimum standards of the curriculum, you know, but then let them do the things that they're trying to do. If they're trying to teach technical skills such as computer or it's a charter school that's mainly towards the arts, great, let them do that. But I think there needs to be some minimum standards that are in the charter schools also. Thank you very much. Okay, and Senator Stewart, just for free benefit, um, I, the first part of this question was about the teacher shortage, and, and then I jumped on the opportunity to also talk about standards and charter schools. So if you could get, get to both of those really quickly, I think that's going to be a wrap-up question. Qualified is a key word that you use there. Um, I don't think it's uh, a good education for our children to just pluck people off the street and stick them in a class because uh, you've got a shortage of teachers. We've got a shortage of teachers because of bills that have been passed and the teachers feel as if their hands are tied to teach. They have had four years of education to be able to teach to the subject matter and the, the uh, level that they are teaching at. And now their hands are tied in so many different ways. So well, all we're doing is it making it more difficult for our qualified teachers, our uh, teachers coming back or wanting to come back to even stay. They're retiring early. So, you know, you can't just put band-aids on everything and think we're going to get a good education for our kids. It is going to cause a major, major problem for anyone that wants to go into college or anyone wants to go into um, um, another uh, more like apprenticeship programs. So the there's not really a big problem with charter schools. Our biggest problem is with private schools. 
private schools are not are given our vouchers and they are not held accountable. They um, do not have to do the same thing. They don't have to do the same testing. They don't have to do the same, um, making sure that the school itself is safe. Uh, they can pay whatever they wanna pay. They don't have to have qualified teachers. There are private schools that actually have directors that have uh, not even a high school degree and they're getting paid big bucks and it comes from the taxpayers. So the issue is private schools. Charter schools basically go close to what the public schools do, but uh, we need more money uh, going to uh, help uh, bring in uh, the qualified teachers, qualified teachers, and uh, that's where we stand with education today. Thank you so much. And I, I did want to thank you both for taking such an effort to be really concise and on point with your answers. It helped us cover a lot of ground, but as you know, we barely scratched the surface. Florida is a huge and complex state and has a lot of needs. But what I'd like to do is give you both a chance to wrap up and and give us your take on why you are the best person to represent this district. Um, and let's start with Mr. Dixon. All right, so my um, campaign, I'm calling it Freedom to Live. And uh, what I mean by that is I want you to have freedom to live and I want you to have freedom to live your best life, okay? Whatever that means to you, wherever you fall, you know, in society, wherever you want, your goals are, your dreams, I want you to be able to achieve them, okay? There are big challenges out there to make this happen, right? But we have to start with the basic freedoms that, you know, that we're, we're given as people in our society, right? We don't want to be bogged down by mandates, you know? We don't want to make it difficult for people to go to work. We want people to have access to good education so that they are free to have the jobs that they want to have in the future. You know, good education is important, whether a person goes to charter school, public school, private school, whether they go to college or they don't. Maybe they go to a trade school, maybe they go into the military, right? Whatever is important to that person, okay? I think we highlighted that our biggest difference is um, between me and Ms. Stewart is that I'm pro-life, right? I'm pro all life, you know? I believe each um, person was knit together by God in the womb, and he created each person, you know, and each person is special. So you're special and um, I want you to prosper and have a great life. Thank you so much. And Senator Stewart, would you like to wrap it up? Thank you and thank the editorial board for having us. It makes a big difference for people to get to hear us uh, directly. I want to continue my work with climate change. I want to continue the blue green algae um, effort that I put forward. I want to do Florida forever and make sure we have money in there for um, protecting our uh, land. Women's rights is extremely important and I'm going to be 100% on top of that. We need pro-choice and we don't need people interfering with our lives and human rights. Human rights is just as important of a subject matter and we need to work on that. So I think that um, all in all, um, I'm gonna work as across the board as I always have. I have had a number of successes with laws passed, particularly in with women, women rape, and a lot of different things regarding our women's population. So I want to continue that. And I think that you will see from my past, uh, I've been with uh, a lot of elected office uh, areas, but I have a record of success and I am experienced and I will continue to work on behalf of the citizens of District 17. Well, thank you both very much. And to our readers, we thank you for taking the time to watch this video. And um, we urge you to take the time also to take a look at our coverage, which will be um, Ryan Gillespie, one of our reporters is, has joined us to listen in. But, but take Take a look at the, the, all the information out there. We will be making an endorsement in this race, but that is not the only factor that you can consider. And both candidates 
have done a pretty good job of speaking out for themselves, and I'm sure they have plenty more to say. So we um, look forward and wish them both the very best of luck.